Welcome, everybody, to FMA Discussion. This is episode 162, and tonight we are featuring Guru Louis Lindo, and uh, he has come highly recommended, and we uh, we are finally able to uh, nab him and get him on here. So uh, I appreciate, I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, we're gonna um, got some questions in, and um, kind of like we talked about on the test run, we'll go through the years. So the LA years, the, <laughs> the cross training years, okay. And so I, I thought that was pretty clever. So, uh, but um, yeah. Before and also, folks, if you're watching, tell us where you're watching from and hit that like button. So you have an extensive, I mean, martial arts background. I mean, you know, from traditional to C lot FMA, um, and we covered you know all those in the sections that I just mentioned. You know. But you, what uh, what year did you arrive to LA? Because I mean, did you do any training in the Philippines before you moved? Uh, or? Yeah, did I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you well. Uh, can you please repeat the question? Sure. So before you moved to LA, did you do any training or anything in the mainland? Or yeah, okay. Uh, oh, before I forget, uh, before anything else, uh, one of the uh, fathers of uh, American Penjaxilat passed away uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, maybe you should, I'd like to uh, pause for a moment to, uh, from Washington. Uh, he's one of the fathers of uh, Ben Jaxilat in the USA. And for those who don't know him, I'm gonna show you a picture of him. Okay. So that's the late Ben Decker, Jim Ingram. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Uh, it's a heavy, uh, promoter of Indonesian martial arts in the U.S. for about 30, 40 years. Oh, wow. Okay. 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 So at any rate, uh, regarding martial arts, I actually started in 1973 in the Philippines. I was Ooh. 12 or 13 years old. Uh, FMA wasn't popular during that time. And... Hmm. Okay, folks. Let's go let him uh, come back in. Um, all right, let me uh, X him out. I'm not sure the test run went perfectly, but he will be back. I'm going to message him now. Yes, if you're watching, please tell us where you're watching from, and he should be coming back. I'm going to send him a message now. Guru Technology. All right. Uh, let me just see. Um, let me message him. Let me just see if he, ah, right, here he is. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, no worries. It happens. Yeah. <laughs> so before you, um, okay, good you, mentioned, you mentioned 1973, and I bet 1973, I can't imagine uh, it, was mo it was popular, huh? Jeez. Yeah, during that time, Dean, in the Philippines, it was only karate and judo. It's right here. Yeah. At least in Metro Manila. So after a few months of karate, I shifted to Taekwondo from 74 to 84. And I also competed nationally for in, in three national tournaments in Taekwondo. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I even uh, tried out to the Philippine national Taekwondo team, but oh, wow. I, didn't, I didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, but you, I, yeah, but just for the fact that you were even able to try out, obviously you yeah. have to, were incredibly yeah. skilled. Yeah, it was for the uh, 1978 World Taekwondo Games in Korea. Okay. So at any rate, fast forward, uh, in May of 84, I decided to relocate to uh, Los Angeles, California to join my sister. Uh, I was about 24 years old then, and of course, started looking for work. And then since I was single and young, 
I decided to pursue my martial arts career again. Okay. So after work, I would go around various gyms in Los Angeles. So I went to visit uh, Bong Suhan School, He Il Cho School, Ben Yurkides School. And then one day uh, I was checking out the yellow pages and I saw a sign that says Filipino Cali Academy. Oh, okay. So, I know where this is going. Okay. I remember that was Tainu Santos School in Los Angeles. Mm. So I made a phone call and the man who answered said, uh, good evening, IMB Academy. I said, oops, maybe a wrong number. So I asked the guy, what does IMB stand for? And he goes, Inosano Martinez Bustillo. So I knew it was the correct place, right? So I asked for the address. And luckily enough, it's only about 15 miles away from my sister's apartment. Okay. So the next day after work, uh, I went to Carson. And I had a hard time looking for it because it, it was in a business park. And the sign was quite small. So driving around the business park, I saw a lot of cars parked, and I heard the, uh, the the bongo or conga drums. Oh, okay, okay. So I knew, in, so I knew it's in the right place. So the side door was open. It was about uh, seven thirty p.m. Okay. Side door was open. I peeked in. I saw Guru Inosano teaching. So it kind of I kind of got starstruck. Oh my right? god! I know you. Because <laughs> I only saw him uh, in, in movie. Yeah. In the game of that. Then one guy called me in. And to walk the other way because that wasn't the entrance. It's only open to get some fresh air in, right? Okay. So uh, after that, uh, I was informed that Guru Dan's class was full, that I will have to wait. Oh, I remember but there was a that. They put you on the list, right? They would put you on the list. Correct. Uh, then I asked, are there any other instructors teaching? And then he mentioned that the phase one class of Sifu Guru Bustillo was open. So I signed up for that. Okay. So I was with, so Guru Bustillo was my first instructor in what they call the phase one class, wherein they would teach you the basics of boxing, Muay Thai, Jun Fan Gung Fu, and FMA, Kali. Okay. So I stuck with that for about a year. And then one day I saw a, an announcement on the bulletin board saying that Professor Greg Lontayao of the Villa Builder Gusakali system would be, would be uh, handling a class at the IMB. So in addition to Guru, by the way, uh, a man named Dave Blair was also teaching a class called Beginning Eskrima. So I also signed up for that. So those are my first three teachers at the IMB. Wow. Jeez. So Villa Brill. Uh, so then I was attending a guru dance, what they call the general, uh, it's a basic class. It was in the morning. Yeah. Uh, Bert would be at assisting guru dance teach the class. Oh, wow. Okay. So okay. it would be a general class teaching various. Yeah. And then one, one uh, class, uh, guru dance showed a, a nice uh, silat movement. And I asked guru dance class. Uh, guru dance where can I learn Silat in its additional form? So he says, uh, Guru recommended it because he was also in that class. So Sunday morning, I drove to uh, Marina, again, not too far from my place, and joined Herman Suanda's class. Uh, it was a small class. There was like only about eight, eight mm. of us. Uh, later on, I'm gonna show some pictures, uh, some uh, historical pictures after the event. So, so we would do classes there every uh, Sunday morning. And then, uh, after a few months, Herman decided to take the class into his backyard. Uh, at that time, he was renting a, a garage converted to a suite in, in Venice, California. So again, another small group of about six or eight people. So we would train there every Sunday. This is this internet connection. Yeah. Fortunately, he's got something going on his internet, so let's see if he comes back in. Uh, it's going to be some editing tonight. 
Uh, boy. All right. He'll, he'll be back. Let me, uh, who we got here? Uh, oh, we got uh, Dan, Dean Larson. All right. Martin. Hey, brother. We got Gilman, Casey, Jason, Brad, a lot of Canada guys. Go figure. We got Jeremy, Steve, Dennis, and Joel. Hey, Joel. <laughs> Oh yeah, we got you. We got you. If it gets cut off, we'll just continue from where we left off. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I'm guess. I mean, this is not the first time this has happened, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, if you don't mind, just right, keep, yeah. keep on back yeah. in. So where you left off was. Uh, so we did the uh, good. Richard had us do a 10 minute dem demo. Okay. Uh, 10 minutes became one hour because the Guru Bustillo student really loved it. The highlight was when uh, one student asked Herman, what's the defense against a side uh, headlock? Oh, okay. So I think the student was expecting like a, a throw or something, but what Herman did was he bit the guy on the side. Oh. And he was just uh, screaming like crazy. Everybody was laughing and clapping that we end up teaching the whole class instead of a demo. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I bet he wasn't definitely expecting to get bit. Yeah, no, he was expecting just... probably a, a leg throw or a takedown, you know, so. Yeah, or, right, kind of, yeah, nothing, definitely not, definitely not being bit. Yeah, and Herman has big teeth and a bit crooked, so they're jagged. <laughs> oh, no. And then, uh, so after that, uh, I also approached Guru Inosano if we could do a, uh, like a three-hour seminar in Marino del Rey, which he agreed. So that was Herman's second seminar. And then the third one was at the Magda Institute in Reseda. Okay. Uh, gym, which is a school owned by Cass Magda. Yes. Okay. Yes. So those were the first three seminars of Herman. Okay. And then, then during that time, uh, Herman decided to invest in a uh, video editing machine. Because he wanted to document, he wanted to document Silat in Indonesia, and come up with a like a videotape okay. honoring various masters in Indonesia. Oh wow, wow! So, so when you're when you're training with him, and you know, obviously you obviously enjoyed what you were seeing and all that. I mean, what what about him as a teacher and the style really resonated with you? I mean, what, what really appealed to you? Yeah. First of all, uh, he was a person. He was a very simple man, uh, happy-go-lucky. He wasn't really strict. Uh, I think what appealed to me was uh, his wealth of knowledge and the willingness to share. But during that time, he was a bit close-minded. He only taught, I think, two or three styles during that time. And Mandy Muda has about 20 plus styles. So 20, we only focused, yeah, oh, so wow. we only focused on like Chimande, Chikalong, and Sabanda. Uh, we did a lot of... Uh, Forearm bone conditioning. Yeah, like he yeah, did the forearm, right? Actually, so, so check this out. Guru, Guru Louie, check this out. Which one? Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I think I'll look for some videos. Yeah, that, that's one of them. That's one of them. <laughs> so, how do you, is it open time you get that conditioning? Is that kind of the. Yeah, yeah, you kind of hit the bone. And then those who want and then they would apply like uh coconut oil to massage it up. Like this. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh during my first few lessons then doing that with my, my new classmates, I felt offended because I thought they were trying to hurt me intentionally. So, oh, so, as, okay, so, as, okay. so as my partner, are you trying to hurt me? Then no, this is how we train, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, right. I would, right. How? I, I mean, you wouldn't know in the beginning, no. exactly. Right, so right. I never done it, right. I never done actual, uh, actual hitting. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it's called mande muda because it's from the root word mande from chimande. That is the main style of mande muda because Herman's mom is from the chimande village in West Java. Okay, okay. Herman's dad was from Sumatra, so between Herman's dad and their teachers, Herman. And his teachers and the mom combined Mande Muda, which is kind of eclectic, of about 20, 25 styles. Wow. Yeah. And then, yeah, when the UFC started coming into uh, popularity, Herman decided to promote 
and bring out the ground fighting of Silat, like the Harimau, the the Pamachan style. Oh, okay. But that style, that, that style is very hard on the body. You gotta be very flexible, and I am not. <laughs> okay. Oh, I can imagine. I mean, I just I seen some yeah. of it, and it it yeah, it looks like you know you're getting wrapped up in a pretzel, and uh, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah. Wow. So, so one thing nice about Monday Mood, I can cater to various people, right? Those who like ground fighting can focus on the harimau and the pamachan. Those who like hardcore simple stuff can focus on chimande. Those who like takedowns will focus on that. Those who like flexible weapons can focus on chip and shoot. So it's got a menu. Yeah, yeah, right. You, you get kind of choose what you like. Now, as far as weapons in there, was it primary? Was there other weapons besides the karambit? Okay, when, during my, again, my time was limited. I was only there for six years. We were only taught the golok, the two uh, short swords. Okay, the golok, yeah. Uh, the kris. The kris. Okay. The short kris, not the big kris like the Philippines. And the uh, kujang. The kujang is actually uh, this one, this sword, this knife. It's like a fish. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's like a fish. It's a West Japanese sword. Oh, sorry, a dagger. Yeah. Uh, but very limited, very simple drills. Not, not as sophisticated as FMA. And then Herman taught also this around the waist cloth. This around yeah. flexible weapon. Uh, I think after the nineties, he became more generous in giving more of his art. Okay, okay. Uh, during the eighties, it was more a focus on just three styles and repetition. Yeah, okay. And conditioning. Okay. Yeah. So his students from the 80s will be different from the 90s. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay. Sounds fascinating. Uh, it's like Guru, Guru Inosanto, right? His students 40 years ago will be different yeah, from yeah, 20 yeah, years ago. Yeah, exactly, ago. okay, right. Yeah. As he, okay, it as depends he... on what they're teaching. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, same thing with me. My students 30 years ago will be different from 20, 10, and even two years ago. Yeah. Um, right. Somebody somebody mentioned a kind um, Mike Rook um, mentioned something, and uh, basically he says that it's a compliment towards you. Um, he 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 lives in England, and his reference and the comment that he messaged me was that your students seem more pragmatic than he's seen in other groups, and he, obviously that's a reflection of you, um, and all that. And uh, uh, I didn't. Uh okay. Seeing that this pic's not showing up. All right. Okay. Can you see me? I can see. Can you hear me? Dean? Yeah, can you hear me? You still can't hear me. Are we good? Yeah, I can definitely hear. I can hear and see you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear you. I'll try okay. to change locations in the house, Dean, okay? Sure, sure, sure. I'll see yeah, if it works. Simple stuff like that, like yeah, you know, I'll can make the world. I try to change locations. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, how about this? Is it good? Seems better, but yeah, let's yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So yeah, everybody stuck around. So you you got you got a you got a uh, loyal following. So okay. nobody left. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good thing. Um. So what we were talking about, what I was mentioning is there's a gentleman named Mike Rook, and he's from England. Okay. And what he sent me on Messenger was, it was a compliment to you, but what he mentioned was that your students seem bad prepared as students and more pragmatic, and he attributed it to you and your teaching. And I was wondering, like, what do you put them through? No, just kidding. <laughs> no. I don't know what's the secret, Dean. Uh, I guess what I usually do here is... Uh... I try to expose my students to uh, to almost uh, everything I know, and then I let them choose which one they want to specialize in. Uh, I don't force a particular style on a student. So I have students who want to focus on KI, some want to focus on De Campo, there's one who wants Silat, there's one who wants uh, Balintawak. Yeah, yeah. And I also give them the freedom to cross-train elsewhere. So yeah. I don't want to try to control them. 
Wow, that's music to uh, my ears. Wow, no wonder why you're so beloved and liked. I mean, that's fantastic when you get the when you really embrace the student's journey without trying to, you know, corner them or move them or control them. You know. Yeah. You know. Wow. Again, some of them have been better than me. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. So um. So now, so at the six years, so when did you, so you, you continue for there about six years in Monday Muda? Uh, actually, not really six years. I was six years in LA. I think more, more like four years. Okay. Okay. Because I met Herman right after I met uh, Professor Greg Lontaya of the Villa Bill system. The Villa, right, at uh, the academy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So then, um, so... So you got, I mean, you graduate. I mean, like you, you continued with him and got instructorship. Am I correct? Yes. Uh, he gave my certification on my last class. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. It was in April of 1990. Wow. And okay. And, and then, of course, and you've been teaching. Wow. So then, um, so from LA, I mean, so obviously you, you trained with, you know, Herman, mm -hmm. who, Continue with Bastillo, Guru Dan, yeah. and all that. But how long? Because eventually you moved. Am I correct? Yes. Uh, in May of uh, 1990, uh, me and my wife we drove up to Canada to Vancouver. Uh, my sister used uh, lived here, so uh, we landed here like May 3, 1990. And then what? What I decided to do is. Uh, uh, after, after after arranging all my driver's license, social insurance numbers and everything, I decided to go to the Philippines for three months and have a, uh, a grand vacation. Okay. Okay, and have a grand vacation. Oh, Dean, if I forget, uh, before we leave the uh, the LA years, I just want to show something to, uh, to the viewer. Sure, sure. Oh, yeah. Please do. Not to show off, but mainly to give tribute to the the teachers. Uh, join yeah. iPad. So this is uh, Professor Greg Lontayao. Okay. Uh, he was my uh, Villa Brill Nergusa Cali instructor. Okay. Okay. That's him. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And then uh, I want to share a picture of me and Herman. Sure. Yep. Oh, wow. You will note that that was taken at Dino Santos uh, old Marina del Rey school. Wow. There's history there. Jeez. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, you know these people. Oh, I got, uh, oh my gosh, there's Bert. So, yeah, Dan, so Paula, Paul, and Bert. Okay, and Paula, okay, okay, yeah, yeah definitely Bert. Yeah. Does he have the long hair or was it short hair? Uh, he had ponytail after that. <laughs> oh and then, uh, lastly, related to the LA years, uh, this is uh, the late Grandmaster uh, Ben Largusa. Wow. Okay. Or Villa Pills, uh, successor. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And probably the last photo for now I'll share from the LA years. This is a very nice picture too, Dean. I'm not sure if you've seen this. I don't think I have. No. Yeah. I gave a, a copy to Bert. Uh, it's at the Inosano Academy. I'm going to close up. Uh, the man in blue is Pendecar Paul de Tours. Yeah, I see that. Yes, yes. My name is Steve uh, Grody. Steve and then Grody. Mark, Steve. Yeah. And then Mark Denny. Wow. And then that's me on the on the far right seated, and then you have uh, in red Salem Masli of Savak, okay. yeah, and yeah. Victor and Rano kneeling oh down. Yeah. So Steve Brody yeah. used to go to those too, huh? Yeah. Wow. So those are some photos from the LA years. So fast forward to the 1990s. So uh, I went to the Philippines for three months. June, July, August of 1990. Uh, during that time, I was mainly into Dose Pares. Okay, so just so I was communicating and uh, having lessons with the Cañetes. In, okay. And then uh, uh, one day I decided to go to the Luneta Park in Manila. Uh, and when I went there, uh, Sunday morning, uh, Christopher Ricketts was there, Tony Jago, Yuli Romo, and Tatang Illustrissimo. Okay. So I was just watching them on the side. Uh, I was talking to Tatang on the by the uh, by the by the planters, 
but during that time, I didn't realize, I didn't know that he was the revered Eskrima Grandmaster. So I did not take the opportunity to learn from him, which I could. You know, I you know, I've heard, you know, yeah. I've heard several say that in interviews because they just didn't realize the magnitude who they were, who they were sitting before, or standing before. Yeah, so I'm, I'm out of those regrets. <laughs> yeah, oh my God! But just to think, though, I'm trying to imagine you're in that park. Yeah, you have three, you know, three of the pillars there. And GM yeah. illustration over there. That just wow. yeah. Uh, that was one of my uh, one of my regrets uh, of not getting, getting the opportunity with uh, with Grandmaster Illustration. But you got to talk to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even uh, even uh, even parts like me. <laughs> I was gonna say. I mean, at least you got to talk to him. That I mean, that right there is like. You know, I mean, yeah. not many people can say today that they actually yeah. sat and talked with the yeah. MLS recently. Yeah. And then, but during that time, there were no cell phones yet. So no selfies. Oh, no, <laughs> right. Hey, look, look, I know you don't have, yeah. hey, we're taking no, your word for it though. There's nobody here doubting you. We're taking your word for it. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> no cell phones yet. So after that meeting, I went back to my vacation and just training. Oh, during that day too, uh, Tuper introduced me to a, uh, an instru a silat instructor who was also hanging out at the park. His name is Freddy Fernandez. So I took Freddy. a few lessons from Fernandez. He's kind of low profile. Uh, he's, I don't think he's, a, he's in social media. Okay, okay. So I took a few lessons from him. His style is called Arnis Penjak Silat. He just probably combined the uh, FMA and... Uh, oh, okay, Nasila, okay. Yeah. And, and Silat. So... Wow. And then went back to Vancouver in uh, September, started okay. job hunting. And then after I found uh, work, I decided to start teaching. So to the help of my friend, Ross Doramal, who's Joel Hankar's instructor, he helped me get started teaching. Okay, Joel's here. Oh, wow, Joel's here. So when, yeah. you, start, when you start teaching, were you teaching, what, uh, Mande Muda? And what far is FMA? Okay. Uh, what I did was when I first started teaching here, I was teaching what I learned in Los Angeles. Okay. So I was teaching a bit of Penchak Silat Mande Muda, a bit of what I learned at the IMB in Osar Academy, yeah. and a bit, a bit of Penchak Silat Mande Muda. It was kind of, if I think back now 30 years ago, it was a bit disorganized. <laughs> Yeah, but you're just starting. I mean, we all we yeah. all been there. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, wow. And then, um, so, uh, so how to go? I mean, when you started teaching, I mean. It... Okay. So what I did was uh, I brought in Herman Suwanda twice in oh. Vancouver. I don't think know the exact years. I'm gonna guess it's something. I think 1991, and I think 1995. Okay. Okay. Along those years. So I brought him here twice to expose him to the uh, Vancouver uh, martial arts community. Uh, they were well re received. Uh, we average about 30 to 50 attendees. Yeah. That's great. And wow. then uh, I brought in Ted Lukai Lukai. Yeah, okay. Okay, and then we had another visitor, uh, Bob Torres from New York. And you had Bobby had Torres from New York? Yeah. He came wow. out here too. I also, I also brought him out here. We we'll uh, say out with him way back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then after that, we brought in uh, Edgar Sulite the year before he passed away. Oh so, wow! Now, did yeah. you now as far as PJ Edgar goes? Before you brought him in, did you ever train with him? Uh, just through workshops. I okay. We, we drove down to Portland, to Washington to attend workshops. Yeah. Uh, I talked to him over the phone. Well, here's a photo, by the way. Oh, wow. So that's 1996, the year before he passed away. Yeah. So was Marlon White, Lowell Hunter's teacher, and Edgar's assistant, Lowell Pueblos of La Meco. Oh, Lowell. The backyard group. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. You got your pictures. Oh my God. They're... Yeah, I got thousands, but I'm going to only show a few. Otherwise, you're gonna get bored. <laughs> no, I, no, I, I'm not gonna get bored. <laughs> yeah. So, I, uh, 
consistently attended Edgar seminars in the Northwest. Okay. And then, of course, communicated with him. And then we planned another workshop, the second one, but it didn't materialize because he, he passed away. Yeah, I know. How tragic, huh? Yes. Uh, and then it was during that time, he, he stayed at our house for about uh, for two nights. So during that time, uh, I asked him so many questions about Illustrissimo, about the Campo, yeah. but he really wouldn't uh, give much about the Campo during that time. Mm. Uh, he was really heavy into promoting uh, La Meco Escrima. Okay. Oh, would be great. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So okay. he would show maybe a bit of Illustrissimo, like the Lutang, the footwork, a bit of what maybe one De Campo move, that's about it. Okay. So I heard about De Campo as far back as 96, but never really seen it, never really done it. Yeah. Uh, and then the next closest thing to I've heard about it was to one of your previous guests, uh, Guru Roger. Roger Guru? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he, he visited Vancouver as well, and he taught my class one time. And he showed some uh, De Campo uh, moves. But after that, silence again. Not, no De Campo. There, 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 was a, there, was another, there was another gap of time. Nothing. Yeah. Anyway, I'll talk more De Campo later, uh, towards the end. Uh, but back to uh, Vancouver. So from 1990 to 96, we focused on, uh, again, what I learned from LA. And yeah. then. About 1994, Balintawak Grandmaster Bobby Toboada made yeah. his first visit to Vancouver. Oh, okay, okay. So I invited him to visit the club the day before the weekend seminar. Okay. And I was impressed. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so I attended all his Vancouver training. I think he was here like eight or ten times. Mm. And I fell in love with Balintawak. So. What I did was I also traveled to Cebu in 94 with two of my students. And we met uh, two Balintawak masters there. Grandmaster Serio, I sorry, Grandmaster Crescencio Go, who's an Anchong Baton student. And Anchong. one of Baton students, uh, Serio Arcel. They're the okay. Balintawak original students. Wow. And then we flew back to Manila from Cebu. Again, we saw Tatang Illustrissimo again at the tournament. Wow. But did not, again, train with him, OK? He oh still didn't see him. So Dean, second opportunity to train with Grandma Silustrisimo. 1990 fail, 94 fail. Okay. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. Right. Uh, again, uh, if we only knew, we could have just skipped that tournament and just trained with No, my God, you'd be like, what tournament, man? I'm going to go hang out with this guy. <laughs> so that was 94. And then. 96, Edgar went into, arrived into town. Uh, and after that, uh, I think in 97, one of the senior Bakbakan international students or members whom I knew way back home, including his brothers, uh, I'm sure you've heard the name, Miguel Subiri. Oh my God, the senator? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, he's a senator and the founder or head of Philippine Escrima Carlos Federation. Yeah, yeah. Eco, Illustrissimo Bakbakan practitioner. Uh, visited town and I invited him to teach my class because we knew each other way back home, especially his other brothers. Yeah. So during class, he showed the basic four corner drill from KI. Oh, the four corners. Yeah. And some footwork. And I got to like it because it's also simple, right? It's just a passing hit, right? Passing yeah. hit. So that started my research and quest. Oh, for, oh, for KI. So now, so, so now we, we kind of cover the cross training years. Yeah. So um, now we're heading towards uh, 99. I, uh, I found work in Alberta. Okay. So we packed up and moved to Calgary, Alberta in 99. I think it was like November. So after settling in a new job and our new place, uh, one of my I started teaching there. Again, Balintawak and whatever I learned in LA and in the mm. Philippines. Then one day, one of my students bought a flyer about Norman Swanika. Master so Norman. I read it, and it says Illustrissimo. Oops, here we go. Yeah, there so we go. What I did was uh, I decided to bring my students up to Red Deer, hour and a half drive, to attend uh, workshops in Red yeah, Deer. Yeah. We drove there a few times, and there were like uh, five-hour workshops, repetition. Wow. So I got to like it. 
Uh, so after two years, head back to Vancouver. Then I decided to teach again. So uh, a very uh, generous man named uh, Mike Sirota, a Taekwondo Hakki instructor, uh, offered me to teach at his school for free, the gym, to use the gym at no charge. Oh, wow. So, so okay. I took the opportunity and started teaching there. So it was mainly KI from various sources. Okay. okay. Uh, and then I brought in Norman Swaniko to Vancouver five times. Mm. So I started, I started adapting this program. Uh, oh, before I forget, Dean, uh, I might get my, uh, my, my thoughts slashed. Uh, while in Calgary, I brought in Master Ray Galan. Ray Galan? Yes. I had Ray. He's okay, funny. Okay, and then, uh, so I started uh, adapting his curriculum as well. Oh, Ray Galan. Okay, okay, yeah. Master Ray. Patakan Kali program. So we had a mix between... I don't mix styles, Dean. I teach them compartmentalized. Sure, okay, okay. One class I would do Balintawak, one class I would do Bakbakan Kali, one class I would do Illustrissimo. Wow. Although I was geared towards more Illustrissimo. Yeah, okay, okay. From the time we got back to Vancouver in 2001, okay? So I started 96 exploring KI and then further progressed in 2001 brought in Norman five times to Vancouver mm. and then after that me and Kenneth traveled together to Manila to train with Tony Jago and met Tom Ditang in Manila yeah oh my gosh yeah this was I think Kenneth correct me if I'm wrong I think it's nine I think it's 2006 that you guys both like start heading yeah. over there and Kenneth started our uh, pilgrimage to the uh, KI headquarters in Binondo, Manila, mm. owned by uh, Tom Ditang, uh, Tony Diego's successor. Jeez. So we started learning Tony's method too. So by then we already had Ray Galang, uh, Mang Tony, and uh, Tupers, KI input. And then during one of my trips to Manila, I took the opportunity to uh, have a private lesson with uh, Manong Yuli Romo. Yeah. So I invited him to the house of my father, so we trained the whole afternoon. Uh, but again, traveling within Manila is difficult, the traffic there is very chaotic, so it's, hard to, do. it's, hard, it's hard to get multiple lessons because of that. Mm. So, so it was all KI, Tom Ditang moved to Vancouver, we were about four or so five. Lovely. Four or five seminars for him. Uh, again, Kenneth can confirm that. I don't know the exact dates and years, but I think we did four or five workshops. And then mm -hmm. brought Pichi Sagin here too to teach. Uh, Daga, her specialty. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So we started accumulating more knowledge from various KI sources. Yeah. So now, now we have six sources of KI. So. Wow. Yeah, go ahead, um, Dean. Just a couple of questions. Just somebody um, had a uh, question on this, and this is from uh, the question is, what is your criteria that you seek when choosing a new system or teacher? Uh, it's not by reputation. It's if me and the teacher has a connection. Because uh, mm -hmm. I've met some who are a bit, how would I say this, uh, non-biased or, or nicely. Uh, some appear to be more controlling, not really arrogant, but I appeal to more simple, low-profile instructors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, or I think I prefer the, the unknowns. <laughs> no, I, I tell you, it's, I, I, I know we can't say much, but I know you, I totally understand and know where you're going. It's, yeah. I don't go um, by the person who has defeated 20 people, you know, or something like that. Yeah, I know, I agree. Uh, yeah. She, one thing I wanted to ask you, because this is kind of what I'm going through now, and I just want to know if you experience the same thing. Like, I'm learning, like, I get exposed to KI by David Gould. Yes. Brandon Ricketts, Burton. Mm -hmm. Like, I got a bunch of sources. Um, in the beginning, it was, like, I thought I was doing a good thing, but in the beginning, I'm like, you know, am I making a mistake doing this? Because 
even though there was some commonality, yeah. but there were some distinct differences and right. uh, some application defensive right. movements. Yeah. And so I started just getting like fragmented up here. But as yeah. of late, though, <clears throat> it's all starting to come together. And I'm just curious, did you go through the same thing I went through? Yes, <laughs> especially I had six inputs since I met. You had more, yeah. Since I met yeah. uh, six of Tatang students. Uh, but they all have something to offer. Sure. They, all teach, they all teach Tatang's art in their own unique way because Tatang did have a program. So Norman's program is different from Manon Tony, Bang Yuli, Grandmaster Ray. They all teach the art differently. But I think it's the best way to learn the art is to learn it from various sources because all of them learn differently and absorb differently. Yeah. No, I'm starting, to, I'm starting to think that as well. Like in the other one I, from Vico Perrine, I get more the Diego influence from yeah. him. Of course, yeah. Brandon Ricketts, yeah. Jam Ricketts. Dave, yeah. more of the Edgar, yeah, correct, you know, yeah, um, and Burton. It has, like, yeah. well, it has to be like that thing, unless those six are twins or are the twins are clones, right? Yeah. Because, yeah, because all your three, four influences or learn the art differently. Yeah, right. So well, it can, has, it cannot be the same thing if you learn from yeah, six. Yeah, actually, if it yeah. was right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's going to be robotic if you have six teachers and the six thing teach you the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Good. It's going to benefit you if all six teachers or four will teach you differently from the same group. Yeah. That's good. So I'm not the only one that went through that. Good. Yeah. Well, I'm one of those two. But there's also nothing wrong with just focusing on one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. Like, you just mentioned you had six. Like, I got yeah. like. I, I, have, yeah. I have four influences. I don't know, I have yeah. six. And that yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good example is uh, the humble and skilled Tom Dita. He focused on one for almost 25 years. And if you see him move, it speaks volumes. Yeah, I hear. I hear nothing but. Yeah. I just, yeah, 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 yeah. The precision, the control, the, the movement, the footwork. Yeah, I can't even come close to him. Because he focused on Mangtoni's system one on one. Yeah, all those years, right, right, right. Yeah. In fact, sometimes I wish I could have done the same thing, or maybe not. I don't know, because yeah, I was always, right. always curious on what the other people have. Yeah, yeah, like I'm, like I know, like yeah, I guess you kind of wrestle, I wrestle with that. I mean, was you know, yeah. you wish you just stayed like one, and you just got that for decades, yeah. or yeah, the branching out of others, yeah. I know. But my, my recommendation is, if you have the opportunity, let's say you like Illustrissimo system, my advice is, if you have the opportunity to learn from as many Illustrissimo mm -hmm. mentors you can have, take it while it's there. That's what and I'm then, doing. And then when you get home, in the, you, you, then you can filter out, right? Yeah. As opposed to regretting not taking the opportunity like what I did. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's, that's kind of what I'm doing. Like I'm with Bert and yeah. definitely with Brandon, Dave, I'm going to see him again. It's just been the COVID. No, um, while they're teaching, take it then. Uh, learn as yeah. much as you can. Yeah. Uh, we try not to be close minded because one day that teacher might not be teaching anymore. And then you'll be like, what do I do now? <laughs> right? Well, what if he decides to quit or retire from teaching? Or yeah. what if he passes on, right? So my mentality is. If the opportunity is there, I'll take it. Um, Even no, I, it agree. I agree. I, I like that where you talk to different people and you get their different perspectives, yeah. you know, why they do like, um, yeah. it's just weird. Like, you know, like for instance, for example, like Friday and media Friday, like they each yeah. have their own little like twist yeah. on it. Some do it this way, some do it this way, some do it that. That's, That's what I mean. Some do it here, yeah. some do it there. I mean, it's just. You, don't, you know why? Because the person doing it or teaching to you, they all have different body structures. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. What if your teach what if what if one of your teacher has a bad shoulder? He cannot do this real high, maybe just low. Because of his physical uh, right. he can't really articulate that. Correct. Maybe yeah. he's doing this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you don't know, right? Right, right. If I have a problem with the shoulder, he cannot do this. So he just do yeah, like this. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but it's it is interesting. Even though in the beginning, I'm you know I'm just like, oh my god, they're doing it differently. Oh wait, they're telling me the other thing, you know. But now I'm like, wait a minute, it's all starting to kind of yeah make sense, gel, and you know. But yeah, because I think you'll improve more if you 
try to learn one technique from various, let's say, let's say Veggie Friday, learn it from three teachers, see how they teach it and how they apply it. Yeah. And see what you can adapt for yourself and which one you like, right? That's what I've been doing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean. At the end of the day, regardless of what Veggie Friday you use, as long as you don't get hit, you, you, you fire it up. Counter. There you go, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like exactly. Did you get hit? No. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the most important thing. Man. Yeah. So with G and Tommy, like, so when he moved there, did you, did, I mean, did you, ba you basically kind of trained under him, right? And I mean. Okay. Uh, not to Mr. Percent. I did not train with Tom only during his seminars. Oh, okay. Just his seminar. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes uh, when he's a guest instructor, uh, the person who actually trades with him a lot is uh, Ken. Ken, Ken yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So wow. uh, I'm always making fun of Kenneth that he'll be the successor of Tom. <laughs> who else is going to be? <laughs> yeah, it's got to be, it's gotta be it him. It won't be me. Yeah, yeah. but what I can do on my part for Tom is uh, help promote him. Yeah. And expose him to the FMA community. Wow. Yeah. So we're, we're kind of in it already on um, the KI years. Like, yes. if you had to just briefly describe for the audience. Yes. I mean, because you, I mean, you, you experienced all the pillars. I mean, yes. plus you know, one, that. plus one, plus one of Norman. Yeah. And plus, right. And plus, plus my and Maestro Norman, uh, who yeah. could have arguably been one yeah. of them. I mean, in my yeah. opinion, um, like, what did you get? Like, for each one, was there a particular thing, a style, okay. a concept, yeah. or that, that's, that's, a very, yeah, that's a very, very good question. Uh, again, just, just, just uh, for the record, uh, what I mentioned to you the other day, uh, I am not, I was not a classroom student of Illustrissimo system. Okay, mm. all my training is informal, but because of my long-term background, I can easily pick up. Okay, so I don't want to misrepresent anybody and claim to be a, a master of KI or an authority. Okay, um, okay, uh, I'll, I'll take it from the most senior, uh, Mang Tony Jago. I only had a few lessons with him, very few, uh, less than 10. Uh, I think from Mang Tony, uh, he was very strict on footwork and body positioning. He would always correct my, 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 my leg that he says, if you don't move that front leg, it's gonna get hit. I have a lazy leg, Dean, and I would always make an excuse. Uh, Mang Tony, it must, be, it must be jet lag. <laughs> jet lag. <laughs> yeah. oh so, uh, so that's one thing I noticed about him. Uh, again, the best person would be Tom or Kenneth, because of Mang Tony. Uh, my time with Mang Tony was very limited. So I think he was mainly uh, strict, but generous. Mm. Opus on fundamentals, and I like the way he taught. He, he used very deep Tagalog words. Oh, okay. okay. Some words which are not common nowadays. Yeah, and he was very simple too. He was teaching in his uh, in his flip flops. <laughs> yeah, I see the the videos on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. One day, when Kenneth arrived, there was like a typhoon, and we saw him sweeping the water from the hole to the hall of the building. Uh, Tom's gym was like it on the third or fourth floor. It was like okay. a train going outside, so he was sweeping because there was a leak in Tom's gym. Oh, okay. okay. So he was preparing the gym for me and Kenneth to train, but he would sweep the floor. He could have let us sweep the floor, right? <laughs> right, but he chose to do right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so I remember him as a simple person, highly skilled, very precise, and very generous. But I think he's generous, I think he's also choosy. With regards to students, I think he doesn't teach just anyone. Yeah. Uh, I notice he avoids the limelight. He avoids interviews. We even offered him to come here. All expenses paid. He refused it. Mm. Yeah. He says, just come here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. No, no, you just come over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. His excuse was, I don't have a passport. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, of course, we respect that. Maybe yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. Public. Okay, and then next one is, uh, next in the seniority is uh, Yuli Romo. Uh, I can't speak much because I only had one lesson. It was only one afternoon. Yeah. But I noticed in that afternoon, uh, 
Manong Yuli Romo had very unique movements. Still does. <laughs> very, very unique. Uh, mm. I believe, don't quote me on this, I think it's a mix of his expression of from his other systems. That's what I understand. That's okay. what I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So I really can't comment much, but uh, from that afternoon, again, he was also very generous, obviously very skilled. Mm. Okay. And then uh, the next one would be, of course, uh, the late Edgar Sulite. Uh, through Edgar, uh, I learned how to train combatively. I learned how to use the the arm guards to train. Yeah. Totally the hand. I never used that equipment till I met him. Right. So I bought a lot of gear from Edgar. Maybe five yeah. sets, five sets. The original ones that he handmade. And they're not for sale. <laughs> no, I was one of those. Are they red? Are yours red? Red and blue. Red and blue. Yeah, they were handmade by him himself before he passed away. He's so I'll keep, those. I'll keep those. Yeah. So yeah. I learned the combative drills of FMA. Mm. Okay. Uh, he was very strict as well, uh, very reserved. But again, my training with Edgar was limited to workshops and seminars. And when he was here as, as my house guest. Okay. Okay. Again, the best bet for Lameco would be the. The Lameco Backyard Group and the original group. Yeah, Roger, Dave, Tino. For Lameco, go to those people. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Yeah. Uh, I can only show you maybe 10% of Lameco. Mm. About it. Okay, and then the next one is the very generous and giving Master Ray Gala. Uh, he offered to teach me uh, via correspondence and online and through notes. And through workshops, his, mm -hmm. his, art, his art of Bakbak and Kali, just recently. Right. Yeah. Uh, Master Ray's program is very structured. A very. Uh, very okay, he's very sure. Okay, okay. I think it's because of his profession. He's a CSEPS analyst by profession. Okay. Okay. Uh, I owe a lot to him, too, uh, even though we were not really classroom students. I actually met him a long time ago. Later, after the interview, I'm going to show you some uh, pictures on, of the list, illustrissimo years. So you can see uh, how we met, where we met. Uh, I also appreciate his generosity when my daughter, when my daughter was three years old, she had cancer. Ray sent several care packages for my daughter. So uh -huh. very, uh, I appreciate a lot, Master Ray. Yeah. So, so between, I think between 88 and till last year, we communicate uh, maybe once, twice a year on what's happening uh, with the group. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I really enjoyed when he came on. He was yeah, yeah, no, Another of knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, the sixth KI influence is uh, Manong Norman Swanico. So uh, nothing with Master Ricketts? Master Ricketts, uh, when I met him in the Philippines, I was still in college. He wasn't doing oh. illustration with he okay. was doing uh, Sagasa kickboxing and, okay. 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 and karate. Actually, if I may uh, share this story on how I met Master Ricketts, uh, I think I was about 19 years old. Uh, I, used, I used to work out in the gym, just, just weight training then. Mm. Boys club. So one day I was working out, and then he walks in the door of the gym. And I knew who he was. He had the reputation of being a street fighter and a, uh, a brawler. I know, that's what everybody said. <laughs> and a tough dude. During that time, there was no bakbakan yet. It was a uh, Budokan Philippines. Okay. And okay. I knew who he was. But I just kept on working out, doing my lat pulls, my bench yeah, press. Like, I don't and, know. <laughs> and then I see him approaching me. I said, oh shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then he goes, uh, Pare, I heard from the instructor that you're a, uh, a Taekwondo competitor. I said, yes. I would have been like, no, no, I'm the wrong person. <laughs> and then Master Tooper says, would you like to spar, friendly? He says, the, the term they use in my list is sport lang. Sport lang pare meaning just for fun. I says, no, 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 no. I'm just exercising here. <laughs> okay. Again, I was about 19 years old, right? What What do I know about street fighting and, and full contact? And at that time, he was doing full contact already. Uh, he, was, uh, he was participating in his group in the in full contact uh, tournaments. And at any rate, he left. Oh, good. 
So I, I was still working out. Now I wish I left early. He came back then. Oh, he came back? With boxing gloves and headgear. And then I saw him moving the benches to the side. I knew it was for me because there was nobody there. It was only me, him, and the instructor of the of the fitness center. Okay. <laughs> and then the rest is history. <laughs> okay. And for the record, I did not beat him up. It was <laughs> the other way around. <laughs> I, I, so since I then, he was. Uh, I since then, we nice. became friends since then. Yeah. So I heard uh, he was a good kicker, just nasty. Yeah. So during that time, he was already ahead. He was ready into full contact during that time. It was just like late 70s. Okay, okay, late 70s. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so he was developing his Agasa kickboxing during that time. But Bakbakan wasn't even born yet. That name Bakbakan wasn't even born yet during that oh, time. Okay. 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 During 78, 79. So we became friends since then. Okay. Uh, when we sparred, I didn't know about leg kicks. I did, I did not know about sweeping. I was doing Taekwondo, right, when I was young. I didn't know how to jump cross so I didn't know that. <laughs> so long story short, I became his uh, punching bag. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, oh, so back to the KI influence. So with Bang Norman, uh, I had more time with him because I drove a few times to his school in Red Deer. Mm -hmm. And then I brought him five times to Vancouver for weekend workshops. So I was actually following his program, but only half of it. I was able to complete the full program, maybe just half. Uh, so that was that was basically it in in, uh, in the illustration. Of. So six influences. Uh, before I forget, I want to share a, a photo, Dean, just for the sure. audience. Sure. Yeah. So what we got here? Yeah. Is that the old gym? Yeah. So these are some of Tony's uh, senior students: Russell, Arnold, Peachy. Serge, Tom, Bruce, and two others. And then Kenneth, Kenneth and me. Yeah. Yeah. So Bruce Ricketts or no, Bruce? Not Bruce, uh, Bruce I, don't, I forgot his last name. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, these are some of um, Tony Diego's senior students. Okay. Yeah. So I want to share, before we proceed, I want to share some photos from the Illustrisimo years, if you don't mind. Sure, no, please do. Um, so this is uh, Tony Diego and I. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, and then of course uh, this is uh, Mangyuli Romo. Yeah. Okay, uh, and then this is uh, Ray Galang. Oh, the bottom. Okay, so that yeah. uh, Master Ricketts, Ray. Oh, that's Master Ray Galang and my students Ed Wong and Lou Faralan and uh, Wayne Loftus. This okay, was taken okay. in, was taken in Calgary, Alberta. Okay. 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 Yeah. And then this is a very nice photo too. It's a very historical. Oh yeah. That's myself, Christopher Ricketts, Dr. Langson, uh, super coach in Sagasta kickboxing, uh, Richard Bustillo, and Ray, and Ray Galang. Where was that taken, huh? Just taken in Carson, California, at the IMB. Oh, at the IMB, okay. Yeah, that's super. Uh, as you can see, he was, he was, uh, he weighed probably 140 pounds then. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, the late Edgar Sulite. Yeah. Yeah. And then oh, last. Uh, and then here's uh, Miguel Subiri when he visited our club. Oh, when he, when he came to Vancouver. Okay. Yeah, he's, okay. he's a guy uh, cross arms in khaki pants. Yep. That's, that's him. Know. And this was him when he was younger in the Philippines. That's Miguel Subiri when he was. This was probably yeah. in the early 90s. Oh, jeez. Okay. okay. And, then, and then lastly is uh, Norman Swanico. Yeah, he's such a nice man. Yeah. So, man and man. Wow. So wow. Those are six of Tatang students. And then this man, too, he also, he's also an illustrissimo. He also learned illustrissimo. Uh, uh, oh, oh, wait. I, I, I forget his name. What was the name? Uh, he's uh, the late uh, Innocencio Shock Glaraga. Yes, yes. He just passed, right? Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. I think the past 12 months. Yeah, yeah. So, so those are the, some of the KI. Uh, so, so those are the six or seven uh, Illustrissimo 
seniors I, I've met. But. What about so now, Maestro? So Master Norman, like what? What have you? He give you, I guess. So I'm sorry. Master Norman, like what yeah. did you get for him? Like what did he instill in you and all that? Okay, uh, I really like Master Norman's program. Uh, he has, he has level program. I think, I think it's called Guru Dax knows this more. I think it's not level, levels one to nine. Yeah. Levels one and two are the fundamentals. Okay. But what I notice, even if you only master level one and two, you can use it for sparring right away. Yeah, okay. Because the initial training is the retirada, wherein you hit the hand, then you hit the head. Right, kind of step back. So step he, would, he, would, he would teach uh, nine basic counters. Okay. Yeah, nine basic counters. Uh, Dean, one moment, okay? Sure, sure. Yeah, Dean? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I really like Mal Norman's program because even just the first two, two levels, as long as you practice them, you could, you could easily apply them in sparring. You can use it, okay, so you can functionalize it right off the, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. because uh, because what he would do, it's by, rep it's, by, it's by repetition. So the first level, which is level one, he would teach you nine counters, wherein your footwork is retirada, either step and slide or, or lutan. So you move back and you hit the hand, then you hit the head. You come back, okay. If it's upward X, hit the hand, hit the head. If it's side to side, it's all it's all hand hits and head. Okay. So it's a very safe way to train. And yet, even if you're a beginner, since you're taught how to move back one or two steps, it's a bit safer as opposed mm -hmm. to crashing in and countering. Okay. So that itself is a genius because it's level one, and yet you can already apply it in sparring. I, I've tried mm -hmm. it. I've taught literally non FMAers a five hour workshop using level one and they could spar. Wow. Right away on that same seminar. Yeah, yeah. That's for I mean that's when you know the material is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, it's what I teach for especially in law enforcement or security because you don't have time to learn a curriculum. Yeah, um, right, right. I teach them the level one program of Norman. But it's very simple. There's no blocking. Yeah, you're just hitting. Right, yeah, right, right. hit the hand, hit the hand, hit the hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, that well. itself is already very, it's, it's a genius already. So, and plus Norman is a very uh, soft-spoken, humble. Yeah, yeah. And also, most people know, he only knows K, I know. He knows, I think, four or five other FMA styles. Oh, oh he, he must have kept that secret from me. Okay. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> Norman, so long a secret. Uh, yeah. Show me his album of his, of his instructors. Okay. But when he moved to Canada, he chose to teach uh, only only KI. Yeah. Yeah. On only KI. Yeah, he's a good guy. Really good guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, before I forget, uh, I want to show you another. I want to share another photo to the audience. Oh, yeah, please. Yeah. Oh wow! I think it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's Tom Ditang, Tony Jagos, yeah. Peachy, Kenneth, and my student, senior student Ed Wong. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Great picks. Okay. I'll see if I can see more illustrissimo. So we have a lot of photos with Tom, see? Uh, again, with Ed Wong, Kenneth Cohen, the late Lou Faralan. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, and then also when, when Bert was here. Aloha. Which, that was like what? Um, yeah. 217 or 217? Yeah, I think, I, think, I think two, three years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I think two years ago when uh, when Bert was here. Yeah. Well, before I forget, uh, related to uh, Illustrissimo too, uh, this gentleman with the white beard is also trained with Tatang Illustrissimo. Oh, Henry Espera? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. If, I may, if I may plug, when the pandemic is over, uh, those who want to train the Philippines can, can see these four gentlemen. Uh, from left to right, you have Freddy Fernandez, teaching at the Luneta. Holding the knife is uh, Grandmaster William Bernas, teaching Bernas Estocadas. He uh, teaches in Manila and in Marinduque. Then, of course, Grandmaster Espera and his assistant, uh, Gani, they both teach at the Luneta Park in Manila. 
So I highly recommend these four instructors to those who visit Manila. Wow. Is he Rapido? Is his assistant more on the Rapido, teaching the Rapido? Yeah, they're both the Rapido Realismo. Okay, okay, okay. They're both Rapido Realismo. Wow. Great picks, man. Yeah. And then uh, there's one more AI related. Uh, you know Arnold Nars, right? He was one of your guests? Correct. I had him yeah. and Durant. Correct. Correct. The man in blue is one of my good friends, Monsul de Rosario. He's one of Arnold's private students in Manila. And uh, I'm sorry, who was the name again? I'm sorry. Uh, the, one, the one in blue, his name is Monsur del Rosario. Mon oh, Monsur del Rosario. Uh, yeah, he's, a, he's one of Arnold's private students. And he's okay. also a uh, 1988 Olympic Philippine Taekwondo Olympic team. Oh, I okay, I, def I heard about uh, He's a Bakbakan senior. Okay. Okay. He's a, a former action movie star and a former congressman. Yeah, he's one of I definitely guys. heard. Somebody recommended him yeah. to get him on. Okay. Yeah. And then the guy beside Kenneth is one of my old friends too, uh, Jojo Ron. He's also an FMA instructor in Washington State. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Wow. And then I'm gonna share a photo of teaching law enforcement in the Philippines. Okay. Yeah. And how yeah. long, and uh, when was this about? Uh, I think this was, I think, uh, 10 years ago. 10 years ago, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So, in a nutshell, uh, those were the uh, the illustrissimo years. Yeah, but those are, I mean, obviously uh, great years. And plus, you're, I mean, you're still continuing to, I mean, teach and, and et cetera. I mean, yeah, uh, but what I did, uh, Dean, out of respect for Tom, when Tom moved into town, I kind of stopped teaching KI. I wanted the attention to go to him. And, and Ken. Oh, and Ken. oh, that was honorable of you. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then right now, even Kenneth is teaching a, a small private group in a park outdoors because we cannot train indoors yet here in Vancouver. Oh, you can't? Not, oh. not, not yet, uh, soon. So mm -hmm. Kenneth is teaching his own group uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in his area in, in Surrey. Oh, okay. But okay. only to a small, small select group. Right, okay. Yeah, we really don't advertise. Uh, we try to choose our students because we don't rely on martial arts for a living. We all have full time. Yeah, right. You're just doing, yeah, the passion. Well, yeah. Right? yeah. So basically, from 1996 to 2018, I had a very uh, enjoyable, fruitful uh, learning, cur learning curve with terms of Illustrissima. Yeah. But I'm not saying because it's like 24 years, I know KI already. I'm sure I've only probably seen half of it. <laughs> I know, it's just, God, it's like a forever yeah. journey, right? You know, jeez. But my advice is, I'll focus on the 50%. I won't worry about the 50%. Yeah, then maybe, maybe that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll take that, even, even so 10%, I'll take 10%, babe. Yeah. I'll focus on the 10 and forget the 90, because I'll never see the 90% anyway. Right, right. So you might as well focus on what you got and just improve it and yeah. refine it. And yeah, yeah. Wow. So uh, that's another learning tip, right? For people who have limited access to instructors. Yeah. If you only know 10% of the art, drill it a lot. Focus it. Yeah. Yeah. Like what, like what the late Edgar would say, always trade with intention, combat simulation, and intensity. Yeah, intention. Maybe, is, maybe strike count when you practice. Unless, of course, you're warming up, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. I remember they telling me that with yeah. intention, with intention. Yeah, yeah. Believe me, even if you only know two types of strikes and good footwork, you will survive in a sparring match. Yeah, if you're really good at what you've been, and you've been practicing a few two things. Strikes, one or two combos, excellent yeah. footwork, head movement, you'll yeah. make it. You'll make it. Yeah, it's yeah, right. That's just going to be better than that's true, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to borrow the saying from Wing Chun uh, less is more. <laughs> yeah, you know, there, yeah, there's another one from Edgar uh, Leda less is more. Less, yeah. Than, yeah. less is more is a good concept, except when it comes to a paycheck. For paycheck, yeah. more, is, more is better. <laughs> yeah, except when it comes, except when it comes to that, that, that green, then yeah, more. More is better. Martial arts, less is more. <laughs> 
But that's so true, though. I do find that like less is more like just refining what you have and what works for you as opposed to, you know, getting more and more and more. Yeah. You know, I mean, for me, I, you know, that's what's happening to me now, Dean. Uh, I've been I've been in martial arts since 1973. Right now, I'm just on my own training. Maybe it's only like five, ten percent. I don't practice every form, every jury I've learned. I don't. Yeah, yeah. But I'm forced to keep them in my memory or my mind because somebody might ask for it. Might yeah, correct. It. Right. Okay. Okay. So sometimes it's nice when somebody requests something which I haven't done in 10 years. Mm. I'm forced to recall. Yeah, to pull it out, you know what I mean? At the hard drive and try to, uh, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm, forced to, I'm forced to review it. Yeah, no, definitely. I would, definitely. Say, I, would, I would say, Guru, can, can you teach me the Mandi Muda form, which I learned from you in the early 90s? I think I already forgot it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got on my notes, right? But during that time, we didn't have phone cameras. Everything was notebook. No, I know. There was a, right. You, you couldn't take videos, right? You, you, better, you better hope that your note taking was really yeah. good. <laughs> during that time, video cameras were very big, right? The camcorders. No, were, no, yeah, they were. Yeah, very big. Yeah, bulky. You're just taking a phone and take a video of your teacher in hiding, right? So no, I mean, look how lucky we are today. You know what I mean? Comparatively to, yeah. you know, I know, I know. Plus, during the 80s and 90s, I think there was no YouTube. There was no online course. No, no, YouTube was not yeah. till late 90s or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I want to learn, I want to focus only on one thing, but I have to at least have a knowledge of all the others because mm -hmm. all my students have different likes and dislikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, so I'm, then, I'm, um, yeah. so we're going to get to, um, just had a qu uh, question here, and this is, um, one from um, how do you and this is I, again this is from Mike um, same guy in uh, England there how do you uh, combine your FMA with your other arts uh, initially what what you can do in fact that's one of Babi Tabuada's requirements when you when you test you have to perform Balintawak and an other art of your choice and I think you have to present 20 techniques anyway in my case Let's say you're going to stick grappling or stick locks. Okay. And add silat footwork to it or silat takedowns. That becomes like stick grappling. Mm. I used to do that, by the way. I would combine, let's say, KI and penchak silat or balintawak oh, and, silat okay. and silat. Okay. Like in balintawak, you can do balintawak and boxing, you know? So it can yeah, be right, done. Right, right, you're right there in the range. Right, okay. okay. It can be done. In fact, it's good that. If a person wants to, to combine styles, okay, because you can't just keep focusing on one, right? If you only do stick, you're disarmed. You gotta have either boxing, multi silat, or, or another empty hand art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, okay. No, that was a good question from him. Okay, now we're going into the um, the compo years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, the past. Three years, I made five trips to the Philippines, not only to train, but to visit my parents. Okay. okay. So I came across on the internet a man named uh, Tito Sabate. I'll show his picture, just for the record. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Tito Sabate is about my age, 62, and he's a de campo specialist. No profile, literally not known in the Philippines. He only teaches a handful of students. He's been doing the campus since he, in his elementary years. So, so he's got under, a, so was he, uh, 50 years of the campus. Uh, so how, did that happen? how did it happen? His father, Paterno Sabate, uh, was one of the campus founders, Jose Caballero's early students. In, oh, in the, so a, a Grandmaster Jose? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, okay. Tito Sabate's father was one of Grandmaster Jose's first students, maybe the first five. Wow. It was, okay. I think, in, uh, 1959 to 63. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm not correct exactly by years, but it was during that time. So he was kind of forced into learning the art, him and his brothers. So mm. at any rate, so at any rate uh, he was able to uh, meet up with him. But the, the problem then was... Uh, 
he lived about five hours from where I was. So I wasn't sure if I would drive there or he would drive to me. Oh, okay, okay. So what happened was during one of my visits, my friend who was a former congressman, Monsu de Rosario, we organized a uh, impact weapon workshop for the uh, community village, community police, mm. neighborhood watch. So what I did was I asked Tito Sabate if he was willing to drive for five hours and help us teach. Guess what? He did. He signed up. <laughs> That's how we met. And this was the event when I met him. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. That was a big turnout. Yeah. Okay. okay. The, so with me is Monsul de Rosario in, in Maroon, and then Tito Sabate in, in the baseball cup. And okay. this right is one of our associates, uh, Jan Ampongan from the Philippine Marines. Okay. Uh, Jan Ampongan is also an, a student of Sergeant Prado. Prado. Okay. The uh, Philippine Marine Force Recon uh, Combat yeah. Instructor. Yeah. So that's how we met. Wow. So I made five trips since I met him. Uh, some years, twice, some years, three times. And then uh, during that same time period, I also got in touch with this man. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? He's uh, actually, he's supposed to come on the show. Yeah, yeah. I've been in touch with him. Okay. Yeah, you should get him in the show. So yeah. he learned from many the Campos seniors, including the Grandmaster's uh, grandson, Joe Malin, the heir. John. So this is John Caballero, the heir of the Campo. The grandson. Yeah, the grandson. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So during those five visits, I would always make it a point to train with both the campo instructors. Mm. Yeah. So since 2018, I was focusing on on the campo. So what did you, what what attracted you? I mean, like, what what did you see in the system that really resonated with you that you wanted to pursue it? Uh, first of all, from what I heard in the media and through Edgar, and that it was designed for duels and for fighting only. Mm. Uh, and it being rare, I hear about it, never see it. There's no video, there's no book, there's, yeah. except for yeah. the latest books. So when I came across these two people and they were willing to share, I, again, I took the opportunity. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're both very generous, giving people. So again, uh, if I may, we can plug this. After the pandemic, those who are visiting the Philippines, if you want to have a nice uh, island hopping uh, vacation, scuba diving, yeah. and FMA, seek out the Luleta instructors. And if you like the campo, you can get in touch with either Paolo Pagaling or Tito Sabate. Tito Sabate. Although Tito Sabate, I think it's more difficult to get in touch with him. Okay. okay. I think you have a hard time getting him to see you or to see him or to teach you. Yeah, problem might be easier. Okay. Yes. okay. But in yeah. case you get a chance to get a lesson or thing with Tito Sabate, you will not regret it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I actually I love these two gentlemen a lot. I call yeah. them like the campo mentors. Yeah, yeah. I I gotta get I gotta get him on. I mean he's his name is I we talked because I, I was thinking I wanted to do some of the online stuff i figured just to kind of you know i've seen some of it through dave lameco and all that you know i def i would like more um it seems like it's a long range and you correct me if i'm wrong but when i've been exposed to definitely long range the whole thing with the broken strikes recovering yeah. i mean just it seems yeah. I, mean, I love what i've seen yeah in my in my uh, brief time uh, of two years exploring the campo I've noticed it's a very minimalist system. Uh, there's really no block. They're, they teach blocking, but they don't, really don't train it. Uh, only in the fundamentals. Uh, they really don't focus on the blocking. So there's there's really no blocking. Uh, it's all long range. No spada y daga. No empty hand, as far as I know. No locks, no throws. So basically, it's like boxing or Muay Thai. They teach you about five to seven strikes and combos. And then you can get this, mixing it. It's all repetition. So I think it's a good system, especially for those who don't have 
a lot of time to train. Mm. And those who like a minimalist system. And those who would like to spar right away. Yeah. I recommend De Campo because it's very close to De Campo. Uh, sorry, it's very close to Muay Thai, boxing, or even Jesse Glover's non classical Kung Fu. A few fundamentals, a few combos, hundreds, thousands of reps. Yeah. Left and right, eating something, you know. Yeah. So it's a seven count system, right? Seven seven count, right? Yeah. So what they do, uh the grandmaster designed it to be like an elementary system. Uh, sorry, a school yeah. system. You got elementary, primary elementary, high school, college, specialization. Mm. Although my so Tito Sabate has a different program because he and his dad have their own version of the campo, but with okay. the father's blessing. So the, okay. so the original is called the campo Urdo Cesurinal, and then Tito Sabate is called uh, the campo Urdo Stress General or the campo, yes, right. or the campo PTZ. They come from the same root, but one is original, one is more like a variant. A variant, okay, but okay. Again, both are similar. Both are different approach, but nonetheless, both are excellent. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. But you have to put in the time. Yeah. Even if you train in an excellent system, if you don't put in the time, yeah, you right. won't be a good practitioner. Yeah. Even worse for you, because you're carrying a reputable system and you cannot perform. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You're, yeah, no, right, yeah. Yeah. No, I've, I, I, there's something I want to dig deeper in. I, it's just, I, yeah. I mean, I, oh, I've seen, I love it. You know? It's very simple, Dean. Uh, in fact, if I may uh, announce this, uh, uh, Paolo Pagaling uh, is helping the Caballero family. Yes, uh, yes. An online course. Right. So, uh, so, those, so those who don't have access to an online course, or even FMA in general, you can sign up on the course. Uh, just go to their website. It's called, I think, thecampo123.org. The combo one, two, three. That org, yeah. All the info okay. there. It's a very uh, structured uh, online learning methodology. Yeah. Yeah, I highly recommend it. Not because I'm in it, but because I know its value. Yeah, 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 yeah. A few people have signed up on it. So when I got back to Vancouver, uh, I started trying to promote the campo in my own small way to my class. Mm. Uh, King Joel brought me out to Calgary to teach. Uh, my friend, the late Lufaralan, brought me out to Washington to teach, uh, to introduce the campo. And then, uh, well, just too bad that with the pandemic, all our efforts had come to a pause. Uh, we'll forget then, uh, two years ago, during one of my trips to Manila, I had a chance to introduce basic the campo to an MMA school. Okay, so this man is a man named Rene Catalan. He's a strawweight contender at One FC. Okay, uh, he opened this gym for us to teach the campo, even though they're MMA school. Yeah, and right. Yes, right. you like this thing? We also did a the campo for kids. Oh wow, that's fantastic! Yeah, yeah I'm huge behind FMA oh. for the kids. Yeah, these kids are Taekwondo and MMA. We had a two-hour de campo lesson, and I had them spar already using the hand guard oh, and padded no. stick. Fantastic! Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all about getting the kids in FMA. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, so, so yeah, what else I got here? What um? So, what about, it's also you know here's one of the things too, and I got a question here from somebody, but um. Actually, we can ask it. Okay, so here's this is a question from Jason. Uh, okay, we already got your your introduction. Do you see similarities with Kali's industry Samo and the Compo? Uh, first, I'll, I'll I'll mention the difference. Okay. Okay. The Com uh, industry Samo is mainly blade based, right? Most people know that. Uh, the Compo is known to be impact weapon, but not really. It's got blade. Being long range, it's obvious you can use a sword, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So in Illustrissimo, you use your height to advantage. Mm -hmm. So you're upright. You're right. Of course, that one was tall, right? It's about 5'9". Yeah. Uh, in the campo, the stance is lower. 
It's a lower stance. And then KI, the weapon is held high. Mm. In the campo, some practitioners hold the weapon low. That's why my photo was stick pointing to the earth, right? Stick pointing, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. It's mainly a baiting technique. Baiting. It thinks you're open, but you're not. Yeah. Okay, so those are some of the differences. Uh, in KI has a more extensive material in KI because you have solo baston, toble baston, punta y daga, yeah. Anyo, a bit of empty hand, knife, mm. os manos, right? Los manos, right, right. So I would say the campo has a more minimalist program. Mm. Okay. So those are two differences. Again, nothing is not one is better than the other. It's just yeah. different. Okay. So similarities. Uh, they're both combat oriented. Mm. Both their masters are proven warriors or fighters. Yeah. They're either by duels, guerrilla fighters, or military. Okay. Both founders are Cebuano from Cebu Island. Mm. Okay. Uh, both masters are generous and giving. Both masters taught Edgar Sulite as a similarity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As a similarity. Okay. But regardless which one you choose, K or De Campo, as long as you practice hard, yeah, you'll be a successful practitioner. So I'm yeah. not I'm not biased on one way or the other. Oh yeah, no, 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 understood. Yeah, yeah, right. I like, in fact, I like all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. It just seems to me they they just yeah um, they, they kind of just go hand in hand. And I'm not just saying from the Momeko point yeah. of view. I mean, yeah. um, you know, but uh, also yeah. did, if I may share. Uh, a lot of people ask me why I'm learning various styles, even from one system. Because I, I always answer them, it's better to know what the other people know than, yeah. not, than not know. I agree. I, yeah. I, when they ask me that, I just tell them I'm nosy. Yeah. <laughs> and I also tell them I have a curious mind, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also it's good to confuse the person because even people here locally don't know what I what I really teach. They would say, Louis, are you Silap guy? Are you Balintawang guy? Are you Kia guy, the Campo guy? Yeah. Whatever you want me to be. <laughs> yeah, I'm whatever, I'm whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Really. Yeah. That's one of my uh, talents, Dean. I have an on-demand uh, memory. Mm -hmm. I can switch just like that, the movement. Oh, really? Yeah, I can go strict Balintawa, I can become the Kampo, I can become KI, I can become Silat at, at a push of a button. Oh man, that's a yeah. talent, wow. Yeah, that's probably one, one thing I can brag about, right? I have a, I have a good, good memory. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, wow. I can adjust my movement on demand. Gee, man, wow. So what you you know so I mean obviously the systems you're doing are definitely functional based right? so yeah. overall in the general sense what's your view on sparring and the importance of it? Uh, it's it depends right on your group. If you're teaching sixty year olds, maybe they will not. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. If you're teaching an average uh, group of uh, twenty thirty years old, of course it's very important. It's like swimming but not going to a swimming pool, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Or, or learning boxing, but that don't spar. You may have good technique, but you may not be able to connect. And some people are like that. They know a lot of techniques being on the air, very strong, very fast. Hmm. But if they don't spar, they cannot, they cannot connect. No, they can't connect the dots. Right? I'd rather you know two or three techniques, but can connect, than know 12 techniques or 20, but cannot connect. Yeah, yeah, no, no. But I suggest for safety with my progression. Uh, mm -hmm. You always start with just the hand and the forearm, and then and the legs. If you're using padded stick, and the legs. Okay. Yeah. Some people say it's a bad habit to to, to, to do hand spar. I think it's still valuable. To, I think it's valuable. You're tracking something that's moving and all that. Yeah. For yes. yeah. yes. yeah. I would say that the hand moves faster that's than what I mean. the or the head. Right. It's also smaller. So if you can hit the hand at will, this one and this one is very easy. That's the way I always understood it. If you can get the hand, then accessing center is going to be so much easier oh, yeah. if you're really acute at getting the hand. Yeah. yeah, because this one moves all over the place. 
Right, right, right. You cannot. Well, <laughs> So yeah, 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 yeah. Not so I, right now. yeah. So I find value in hand sparring with safety, yeah. padded sticks. Uh, if I may also announce this, uh, we use padded sticks uh, made by uh, Master Boy Garcia in the Philippines. He's got excellent padded sticks for sparring. Wow. You know, somebody mentioned that. So what, what, what does he have? A wood core? What's he? Yes. Using? Yeah. And then uh, he's, he's, he's got a handle. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. you just contact him and they'll make them? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think he stops them. I usually, before I visit Manila, I, I just message him. I say, uh, Kong boy, I'll be in Manila for two weeks. Can you make me 20 padded sticks, 20 padded Oh, then you bring them back. Yeah. And then we meet in my parents' house and then uh, I take them back here. Oh, yeah. So he probably doesn't ship. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. I got you. yeah so again, back to sparring. Of course, it's valuable. Uh, some people choose not to. Maybe they have a uh, physical uh, endurance or disability. Mm -hmm. but I think at, at the very least, try hand sparring. And at leg. least that, right? Yeah. Hand, yeah. And leg. hand and leg. Yeah. Jeez. But not everybody will want to do like what the dog brothers do, right? Mm. Not for everybody. So uh, I want, for me, I want to cater more to the average person. Oh, you're right, right, as opposed to the ones who want to enter that realm or, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I got yeah. You. Like when I visit the Philippines, I always try to teach non-FMA groups. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Because um, sometimes it's even harder to teach people who already know something, right? Yeah, long, right, they come with a clean slate, they have yeah. no bias, no, yeah. right, no, I, no, I, I, I love definitely. teaching uh, Taekwondo, Karate, Kung Fu practitioners. I love teaching security guards, law enforcement, military, who have no FMA background. Yeah, no, I can see that. I can see why. No, yeah. clean slate, right. You're just right. Yeah. Why also it's easy to, to teach? Because you only have to teach them the fundamentals. That's that's true too, right? You're just going to give them the basic stuff that's going to yeah. yeah. The average person, the non-FMA person, the police, the military, the senior citizen, you only want one or two strikes. Yeah, yeah, just give them a couple things, right, right. They don't like to learn the other stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, that's... They don't even well, like to learn Spade Daga, Flexible Weapon, Long Stuff. Yeah, talk. no, yeah, yeah, right, right. So that's a secondary reason why I like teaching it. I don't yeah. need to bring in a lot of material or knowledge. Yeah, plus you're exposing, you're, you know, you're, you're exposing the art, you know, to yeah. people who've never seen yeah. it before, you know, spreading yeah. it too. Yeah. You know? I also love um, um, teaching and training fundamentals. I'm a fundamentalist. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I I love the basics. I you know, I don't yeah. care about if I yeah, I love the basics. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's what comes out, you know what I mean? I mean so um so wow, this has been fantastic. So what um so what are future goals for you? What are future goals for you and what you want to do in the future? Propagate, teach? Yeah. For me at, 60, at 62 here, uh, I think I'd just like to maintain what I'm doing here for the past, since 1990. Just maintain a small, serious, dedicated group. Mm. Just once a week is fine with me. It's been suggested or offered more classes, but uh, uh, I think once a week for me is fine. Just yeah. to maintain. But I teach once a week, but I, pra I train myself five to seven times a week at home. Oh, at home. Okay, okay. But I yeah. teach one. In fact, we're starting tomorrow. My first outdoor de campo class is tomorrow. So, for, and this has been for what? Over a year now, right? Yes, yeah, since the pandemic. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Last year, I had about eight outdoor classes. Okay, okay. Yeah, and de campo is the perfect social distancing art. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally social, yeah, long range. Yeah, yeah there you go. Range. There's no checking, it's all long yeah, range. There's no checking, no, right, okay, okay. So tomorrow's my first class, uh, only for three months, only for the summer. And then when the pandemic is done with, I plan to continue my yearly once, twice a week visit the Philippines to continue to, my to continue, continue to compo and, okay, okay, okay. And then uh, fortunately, uh, my, one of my teachers, uh, Paulo, he also teaches another FMA style called Arnes Jablo or Barao Subbo. Oh, that's new to me. I, I'm not familiar. Okay, okay. It's a knife only system, Dean. Knife only. It's only knife. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's also from Cebu. 
Cebu. All right, okay. It's now headed by uh, Grandmaster Boy Sinisa from Cebu. Oh wow, I'm not from huh, interesting. Yeah, he's 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 on he's on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Huh, I gotta get Paulo on here. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, his active followers are from Europe. France, Romania. Yeah, so Europe. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so Paolo taught me a bit. Again, with the chance is there or opportunity, I would like to learn from him too. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh but Paolo can teach the fundamentals of Barossi as well and Ernest Diablo. Mm. So as of now, till I meet something interesting again for the next maybe five to 10 years, till I'm 72, I'll probably keep on practicing the campo. Yeah. And then hopefully when the pandemic is over, I can start my promotions the campo in Washington and also in, uh, in Western Canada. Uh, we're starting to develop small groups. Uh, Joel is doing his own thing now with the campo. Some of our groups in Washington state are doing, but again, kind of paused because of the pandemic. I know. Uh, hopefully we can restart in 2022. Yeah, gee. So, uh, in Washington, who, um, what schools are you um, teaching out of there? Uh, uh, mainly from my friend, the late uh, Lou Faralan. He passed away a few months ago. So, oh, okay, okay. Uh, Lou Faralan is a Kaju Kembo, Muay Thai boxing, Jiu Jitsu instructor. He's ex military. Very kind hearted person, but very skilled and very dangerous man. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> I'm teaching Tia in the campo through his school called Kalahi Academy. I believe okay. students and children are will, will, will keep it alive. Yeah, it's called Kalahi Academy of Martial Arts. Okay. okay. They're up in Northern Washington. Northern Washington. Okay. Yeah. And then in uh, in Eastern British Columbia, Joel Hankar. We're going to start the program. Yeah, well, I had Joel on here. He mentioned he yeah. was he was doing it. Yeah. And we'll try to develop some. Uh, some following in in Calgary to the people I met when I did the seminar there. Yeah. Yeah, and then of course our local our local Vancouver scene. That's about it for now, Dean. Uh, we, want, we want to do it slowly but surely. Yeah, but you guys got quite a scene there in Vancouver. Yes, uh, we're very lucky. We have a very uh, uh, non. In fact, that's what Gurte Lukai Lukai first mentioned when he first came here. There's no animosity. Uh, no, I never heard of anything with you guys up there. Yeah, we support each other. Uh, in the early 90s, I used to organize a, uh, an inter-club joint training between mm -hmm. my group, Pekiti Tirsha, Dog Brothers, Balintawak, Molin Arnis, Mati Arnis. We all train together in one day. We give each other half hour to one hour to teach. So we did about three or five of those joint training. And then we have guest instructors. Like at mm -hmm. one time, Renela Tosa showed up. Oh, yeah, so. okay. Okay. One time the uh, Bahala na Eskrima instructors came out. Oh, okay, multi stocking. Okay. Yeah, they came out yeah. to share their art. So we have a very welcoming FMA community. No, I've heard nothing but. No, I yeah. hear that's a place to go. Yeah. yeah. And then some instructors based out of town show up too to train with us. No, mm. uh, as far as our group is concerned, it's a non ego, non political group, then. No, I've heard nothing but. No, I mean, everybody I talk to says that yeah. nothing but positive things there. There's just no, no, you know, nitpicking or, or yeah. politics, nothing. Yeah. In fact, when Guru Inasano came up here and, and heard about it, the first thing he told me, Louis, how did you do that? <laughs> yeah, how'd you, how'd you, right, how did you, how did you obtain this? How did you obtain yeah. this non political atmosphere and culture yeah. up here? Yeah. If I may share it, some of our visitors here were. Yeah, definitely. Here's, here's Professor Leonard Trigg from Portland. Yeah. He's one of the top Lameco, Villa Brill, Lukai Lukai, Lukai yeah. instructors. Yeah. Okay. He's, and then this guy is also one of our visitors in Vancouver, Dr. Jopet Laraya from La Punti, Arnis de Abanico. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, who else was here? Uh, the guy with the. The guy on the far, this one, is the late, okay. the late Elmer Ibanez of Lightning Scientific Arnis. Oh, Lightning Scientific. And then this guy, the tall guy beside him, that's Grandmaster Ben Lemas Eldesan of Lightning Scientific Arnis. That is Eldesan. Elder, okay, okay. Okay, and of course, uh, Canada's best stick fighters. 
Philip Jelina and Loki Jorgensen, the top two dog brothers in Canada. So okay, so oh, are you? Phil, all right, I, we had Galinas on, and and I've heard of the other gentleman's name. Uh, uh, the guy beside Philip is Loki Jorgensen. He's uh, yeah. He's uh, the head dog brothers here and Piquete Tirsha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and some of their senior Piquete members. Okay. So we've had so many visitors. Uh, if Guru Roger's watching, uh, this is when Guru Roger visited us. Oh wow! Roger in the in the bandana. Yeah, he's in the front there. Yeah, yeah. Frank Stainless, yeah, that's him. Wow. During one of his uh, visits, and, and guess who else came for a visit? Uh, the late Grandmaster Remy Presas. Oh, he even showed up. Wow. I'm sure, yeah, and many more Dina. Uh, there's many more, but I want I don't want to, I don't want to bore you with photos, you know. But, oh well, I'm not bored. So. Yeah, those are some of the uh, people who, who who came into town. Yeah. Oh, somebody made a comment. Um, do you have any of these pics posted online? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> this one is fifty dollars. This one is hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, Dean, I have, a, I have some nice cool photos. Here's another one. Do we have time? Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is Grandmaster Crescencio Go, Balintawak. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. Look at the ocean. Jeez, man. Uh, uh, yes, I have more to share here. Uh, some are really cool, you know? Uh, I bet. We got to create an online... You know what? You can... You can create a studio online and charge people. That's that's Cafe Cañete, one of the legendary fighters of Cebu. Cañete, yeah. Cafe Cañete, he passed away already. Yeah, Kakoi, yeah. Yeah. This are some. Uh, this one too, Dean. These are some of the top Jose Pares masters. That's that's Momoy Cañete of San Miguel. Momoy, okay, yeah, yeah. In Tinkarin of Jose uh, Pares, the knife specialist. Jeez. Yeah. I have a collection here, Dean. <laughs> I bet. This is Dionisio Cañete and me training uh, Spada Daga. Dionisio Cañete. Yes. Yeah. Like gold you got there. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else I have here, Dean, if, uh, if we have time. We also did the uh, Canadian uh, Arnis team. Oh, they are, oh they, okay. Yeah, the man wearing glasses in the front, that's Guru Jude, Jun De Leon of Cali De Leon. Oh. Jun De Leon, okay, he, that's right, he's in Canada as well. Yeah, he's in Toronto. In Toronto, I'm trying, okay, yeah. I'm get a hold of it. So this, thank was, you. this was our IMD class photo. Shoo, man, that's what, late 80s, early 90s? It is probably, I'm going to guess, 88, 87. 88, 87, wow, look at that. Class, holy crap, man. Yeah. And this was our uh, Villa Brill, Nergusa class. Oh, at the academy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Is that Mark Stewart? Nope. Mark, but I have a photo with Mark, but I don't know where I, where I put it. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. It looked like I saw the long hair, so I kind of just. Jeez. Yeah. And many, many more. I don't want to bore you guys, but that, that's uh, no, man. You got to you're gonna have to create an online library, and you could charge people to visit it. You, they go look at all your pictures. <laughs> yeah. So I gotta get a I gotta get a whole Paulo Pagalang. Yeah, I suggest you get Paulo and, and together with the 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 Campo Air John. John Caballero. Well, I'd be, oh, I'd be honored yeah. to if they could both. Yeah. I know so many people that get over there, it's been tough because of the pandemic or the yeah. internet connection over there sometimes. Yeah. yeah, once in a while, I try to join uh, uh, Zoom lessons uh, with, with John and, uh, and Paolo, but because of the time difference, sometimes it's hard to uh, be on time. I'm say because I'm, they're 12 hours ahead of yeah. me, so yeah. they're 15, right, for you? Yeah. 15. Like when Jong does his class in Cebu, it's 1 a.m. in Vancouver. Yeah, 1 a.m., right. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you know. I have a nice photo here, Dean. 
we got here? That's my good friend, Jojo oh, Ron, so in Washington, okay. and Richard Bustillo in Manila. Wow. This was taken in 94 at the Philippine Army Gym during Sifo Bustillo's workshop. Jeez, 94. Yeah, that's 94. This is our Villa Bill class when it first started. It's very small when it first started. I was gonna say, who's there? We got Greg Lontayao uh, kneeling down, and then in the back in tank shirt is Dave Lear. Dave Lear, okay. Yeah. So those are some. Yeah. And then this is Edgar's very first seminar in Vancouver. Wow! Look at the turnout. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of a lot of goodies. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. So what I do, um, what I was talking, uh, uh, I was talking to Ken. I was hoping, you know, this has been great. And again, I, I thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, no, you're welcome. But I was still hoping, like, one time to get all three of you, the big three, on you, yeah. Kenneth, and Tom, the big three, the, the Vancouver big three. We can do that, or you can interview Tom and Kenneth, just the both of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, whatever. I mean, whatever works. I mean, I'd be happy to do the three of you or yeah. whatever. Because uh, I know he's, he, I know he's very low key. You know? yeah. uh, oh, then before I forget, I want to show this to the audience too. He's, sure. he's, he's unknown in the campo. This is Tito Sabate's father, Paterno P. Sabate. Wow, okay, okay. So he was one of Grandmaster Jose Caballero's early students. Early so students, yeah. yeah. So he was before stick. Eric Avilas then, right? Yeah, see the stance, the sticks pointing down. Yeah, six, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Wow. So those are some. Uh, do you know a man named Nari Babao, Dean? I'm sorry, who? Grandmaster Babao from San Diego area. One of Guru Dan's uh, close friends, Nari Babao. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, okay, yes, yes, yes. This, this is his son. Wow. In the middle with the late Victor Henrano. He was in San Diego uh, four years ago. Four years ago. Yeah. Yes. And lastly, before we finish up, another nice group photo. So who we got here? We got... Uh, Victor, myself, Willie Victor Loriano, Lowe. Loriano, and then Sibo Bustillo. Yeah. Uh, Phil Dang and I think Ron Estelier. This is in San Diego four years ago. Four years ago. They had the uh, Kajukembo Ohana Unity Seminars. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic, man. Yeah. Yeah, we got to get you back on again just for the pictures. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. We need about maybe hour to two hours for photos. I have a shoebox of photos, Tim. I believe it. My gosh, my yeah. gosh. So, so hey, yeah. what's the story? If they go to Canada, is, are they requiring everybody being vaccinated? Okay, right now the border is closed. Oh, it's closed. So forget it. it's not even an option. It's closed for over a year for non-essential travel. Yeah, so I haven't crossed the border since March of last year. If you fly in, you have to quarantine, I think for a week. So if I were to come there, I got I got to lay low for a week before I do anything. Yeah, it's a bit of a hassle. So I'll wait till the pandemic is done. And then, okay, yeah, yeah. Because I'm telling you, Vancouver, it's on the list. Yeah, I, I, think, it, I think it's better to wait then. Uh, even me to the Philippines, it's very difficult to go home now. Yeah, I know. Uh -huh. I, feel like I need a visa to go back to my own country. I need a visa. So, that's, that's ridiculous. Temporarily. temporarily. Uh, after that, I can go back to my, my uh, former privilege. I, I, I can just go in and out anytime. Yeah, but yeah. But now, if you have a foreign passport, which I have, I, I need a tourist visa in my own country. <laughs> I know. Think about that. I know. I think, you know what, though? I think by, um, I think by August or se I, September, Yeah. I think by early fall, yeah. I think, we're going to see a different landscape. I hope, anyhow. Yes. I hope. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's looking good now. Uh, we're, we're starting to relax restrictions here a bit, right? Like mm -hmm. We're allowing outdoor training, maximum 10 people now. 
All right. Okay. Uh, restaurants are open with physical distancing yeah. and, and barriers. Our office yeah. is open. We have barriers in the office between between our cubicles. So. I think yeah. I think by fall. I think. Uh, yeah. I hope anyhow. I mean, this is yeah. you know yeah. But uh, but this has been absolutely wonderful. I, you know, again, I thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Yeah. You know? I hope you I hope you uh, enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed you. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. um, nothing but positive comments here. So what I do is I download this onto YouTube. So what I'll do is I'll send you the I can send you the link. Yes, I can share it. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and all that. But here you. Um, I hope this is not the last that we you know we see each other or talk to you again. Hopefully, I, I want to get. Yeah, I'd love to get the big three on. And yeah. Uh, and I suggest you know, get Paolo Pagaling on. Maybe oh, even definitely no. I got to get him on. Get him. They could speak more about the campo more than I can. Yeah, yeah, I definitely want to get them on. And uh, oh, yeah, no, for sure. Matter of fact, I got it written down right now, and he's he's on the list, man. I got to get a hold of him. <laughs> yeah, and, and get Tom and Kenneth too. Those two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So and uh, and all that. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, thank you again. You you, know, you take care of yeah. yourself. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you and thanks to all those who, uh, who tuned in. Oh yeah, there's a bunch, a bunch of comments. So yeah. if you get a chance to check them out, they're nothing yeah. but positive stuff. So yeah. So everybody, yeah. take care, keep safe, and keep training. All right. Well, thank you so much, Guru. Luri. <laughs> you take care of yourself. Okay. Thank you, Dean. Bye bye. Wow, I can see why he's so well liked. Man, whoever it hasn't for a teacher, man, you guys are lucky students. Man. So who is next? Um I uh, gotta check. There could be somebody Sunday. I, I'm gonna find out tomorrow. And then we got somebody Wednesday. Actually, very big names. Very, very big names. So uh yeah, so stay tuned um and all that. But again, uh, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to FMA Discussion where you can see this interview and other great ones. All right, folks. Thank you for all those who uh, chimed in and listened. Uh, and uh, I will see you soon.